Welcome everybody. I'm Love Coach Scott K. Thomas, and it's Straight Talk on Friday night, July 9th, 2021. I want to welcome those of you in our Zoom room. We've got over 20 people with us. So, and I see a lot of familiar friends and faces. And certainly want to welcome those of you watching on Facebook or YouTube. And I also want to watch welcome those of you watching the replay, which is like the majority of you. Um, now, for those watching live, we really want to get your thoughts, your comments, and your questions, because we have two very amazing people with us tonight. Uh, and they're both people who spend their lives making life more wonderful for you and me and all of us. They're both masterful in their fields, and Trish and I are really honored to have them with us. Um, so, speaking of Trish, I'm going to put the spotlight on my partner here. Um, and uh, welcome, Trish. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Straight Talk. And wherever you are at in the world, I hope you are staying cool or warm <laughs> or nervous. Wherever yeah. you're at, I hope you're comfortable and delighted in your day. And yeah, for those of you in our Zoom room, and we've got about 27 people now, give us where you're from, uh, your name and where you're from, and definitely thoughts, comments, and questions. And Trish, do you want to in uh, introduce Robin? I sure do. So I had the lovely pleasure of having Robin on the Self Love Show not too long ago. And Robin is an amazing human. Um, let me read her bio to you because it's stunning. And if you want some really epic content to just like follow and inspire you every day, you should just check her out on Facebook and Instagram. Just saying, like, that's my own personal plug. Robin Rivera is a transformational facilitator and sacred business mentor who guides spiritual leaders to awaken their unique power with humility, self-mastery, and an unfuckable with attitude. She has an extensive training in transformative studies, as well as ceremonial facilitation in expanded states of consciousness. Robin comes from a lineage of Mexican curanderas who have inspired her to blend their traditional practices with modern day technologies. What makes Auburn Robin's offerings most impactful is her background overcoming incredible adversity, complex trauma, and sexual exploitation. These have been her initiations preparing her for the service she brings to the world. Her path has led her to be mentored by some of the best practitioners in the world. In addition to her ceremonial work, Robin is a speaker and a trainer in the survival, the survivor-led anti-human trafficking movement as a survivor herself. She has spoken life into and trained over thousands of people thus far and has gratefully received 37 awards and accolades for her leadership, advocacy, and academic vigor. rigor. She holds a master's degree in consciousness and transformative studies and a BA in social welfare from UC Berkeley. Good fucking job, by the way. <laughs> Lastly, Robin has built over a half million dollar spirit led business while being a single mother of three young children. Her mission is to honor the sacredness of being human. Thank you, Robin. Robin, that's amazing. You know, like I heard all of that, and then, oh, and by the way, she has three children. <laughs> like, what the WTF, right? We'll get into that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm right off the bat. I'm curious because you do a lot and you accomplish a lot, and to do all that and to be a mother of three. For all of our mothers watching, any tips on that part of life in terms of how to be so professionally successful and still be, you know, a successful mom? So it's actually kind of the opposite of what people think. People think she has so many kids, so it must be so hard, but it's kind of the opposite. Because I have so many kids, I'm, all, I'm pinned up against the wall. I don't have another choice. Failure is not an option. And so I have a big why, you know, it's, and the advice is that to give yourself zero excuses. I give myself zero excuses. I'm solution oriented and I'm strategic as fuck. So I, I puzzle piece my schedule. So for example, son, I have to have some Facebook ad stuff cranked out by Monday. Wasn't really prepared for that. So what does that mean? That means Sunday, I'm going to get up at 3 a.m. That also means Saturday, I'm going to go to sleep early. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it comes down to that and I don't have a good excuse not to do that. I just make it happen. 
Wow. Um, well, that's quite an opening and quite a start. <laughs> um, I'm really glad you're with us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a moment to introduce our other uh, guest. Um, and this is Nev Winkworth. And some of you saw him last Saturday night uh, on our show. And I was so impressed, Nev, with who you are. Uh, I was like, okay, I want as soon as possible to experience this fellow more clearly. For those of you who didn't watch the show, Nev's purpose and deepest desire is to continue to expand the possibilities, committing his life to heal and facilitate others to have a deep impact on their state of well-being. Mm -hmm. um, he does a, a wide variety of um, integrative healing using properties of frequency and vibrational energy. Um, and we're going to actually get a chance to see him in action as he's going to do a, a little brief homeopathic experience with our beloved Trish. So, you know, welcome, Nev, and it's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you, Scott. And it's beautiful to be here with um, you all. Um, yeah, the experience to, to come on board with, with, with you on Saturday Night Alive was a beautiful experience and um, to, to be with so many other uh, luminaries. And, and, I, and I use that word just as the word because as I speak into that, that which I speak into, we're not separate from what we are, uh, one being. Um, and what an opportunity to come here to be able to share from a, a space of what I call the sacred space, a space of truth, so that we can allow others to come into have their experience where there is no judgment, there is no expectation, preconceived ideas or conditions about who or what they are. And we're just here to meet each other in that space without us even knowing we've been to then keep connect deeper before and beyond the mind into who and what we are. Yeah. And so um, I'm, I feel very blessed to be here, to be part of this sharing. So, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you, Nev. Um, thank you. It's beautiful. You know, something that you just said uh, that I think all four of us have in common is in Love Coach Academy, uh, our approach is that nobody's broken, nobody's fucked up, but life is difficult <laughs> and life is hard <laughs> and relationships are hard. And so we help people remember their divinity, to remember their magnificence, while not, you know, using that as a spiritual bypass, um, that there are very real challenges and issues that we all face. Um, and so I love really what, what you just said, Nev, and I, I'm imagining, Robin, you have a similar, uh, in, in what I've read and a little bit that I've come to know you, I think all four of us are very dedicated to playing our role in this time of planetary transformation. I'm going to go to gallery view um, and helping people to remember their magnificence, helping people to really claim them, their true self outside of whatever shame story or environmental conditioning they've gone through. Mm. So as that is kind of an opening thought, I'd love to hear from, any of the three of you about how you do that. How do you support people to remember who they truly are and to access that? Robin, would you like to speak into that first? Oh. <laughs> I'm just feeling my thoughts, feeling okay. into it. I feel women really need to pause to feel what wants to come through. And, you know, it's, I'm pausing because I work with people in different capacities and meet them at different capacities. Um, one of the ways that I support people is through ceremonial work. Um, it's not really my bread and butter work. It's my just deeply something that I'm called to do and to offer. And in the ceremonies, I... I call it fertile facilitation where I surrender my body and my vessel to the divine and I allow it to guide me. So each person is very, very unique and different. I, I give, I, <laughs> I give them processes and little experiences to peel their onion throughout the day. 
and at the right moment <laughs> in the intuitive right time, I will uh, go really deep with them. And that might look like um, mirroring. It might be them putting them right that smack dab in front of the mirror and guiding them to see what they see and to feel what they feel. And then I rely on spirit to fill in the gaps. And I just wait and I listen and I watch. Some people I'm guided to give love to. Some people I'm guided to to perform some kind of psychic surgery. And some people I'm called to be a hard ass with them and not coddle them and let them find their own inner strength. So it's really eclectic. And I think mostly what I'm doing is just guiding people to experience their own truth by manipulating the outside situations. Manipulating is not the right word, but that's the one that's coming to me right now. It's just kind of dancing with their energy and mirroring them. And I will just intuitively know what is my place in this dynamic. And sometimes I don't have a place at all. Sometimes my place is to sit down and shut the fuck up and let spirit do the work, let them do the work. And then sometimes I'm right there in it with them, drooling, spitting, yelling, raging, whatever. So it just takes what it takes. And each person is very unique. So how do you what how do you trust or cultivate trust mm -hmm. of because you're you, know, you have another person's life in your hands at that moment you know you're an authority figure that would get you for guidance so how do you cultivate the trust that with this person i need to be a hard ass with this mm -hmm. person i need to listen yeah mm -hmm. This is something I teach in one of my courses, and it's a very tricky thing to teach because part of it is a gift. And based off of my experience through many, many years being in very intense situations where I had to intuit and I had to see into people. Um, the way that I have cultivated this trust is A, through training, having a teacher and a mentor putting me on the spot where I wasn't, it wasn't all the weight of the ceremony, all the weight of the person's well-being was not on my shoulders. And I got to practice what I saw and what I felt and see what's going on. But now it's happened so many times that I can read their body language. I can feel in my heart. For example, I have one of my favorite clients who's now a dear sister. She had a lot of codependency come up in the session and I could feel that she was getting clingy to me and she wanted my approval. She wanted my validation but based off of my experience. I, I believe that these people are mirroring parts of our consciousness. And I, I just, I felt that if I were to hold her hand in this moment and validate her and, and make her feel totally, make her feel fill up her acceptance bucket in this moment, it would be a disservice and she would not be able to hold herself in that moment. How do I trust? You know, I guess that was a little bit of a risk, but I did it. I did it in a mild situation. So when a bigger situation arose, I had that trust already. And what ended up happening with this person was exactly what I intuited. She was not able to get her dopamine fix from me coddling her. Instead, she had to go deep into her heart and find what, where is that? And this is, this is a client whose parents died when she was very young. After that ceremony, she transformed and she was able to show up for herself and, and be there for herself and be more of a leader. And she thanked me so many times and we were able to come together with and then have the sweetness and then have the validation and, and tell each other what our what we were wanting from each other and what our judgments were. And this is some of the deepest work I've done with people was when it was challenging like that. And um, and I felt to let her find her own strength. Also, my teacher did that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, I'm going to gallery view and I want to hear from Nev uh, for a moment about that. But I also want to read, I always love reading some of the comments from the people and welcome to the 35 people in our Zoom room. Um, <laughs> uh, so Mark uh, Danisovsky writes, I'm loving this already. Without tight deadlines, with extreme consequences, I'm indulgent 
and I, do, I am diffuse with my time and organization. Thank you already. And frankly, as a 62 year old, I'm probably not going to have three children to help me get over my procrastination. So <laughs> I appreciate that, Mark. That was a good one. Um, uh, Sarah writes, beautiful Nev. Sarah also writes, Robin is all about making things happen. <laughs> Boy, we've already heard that, haven't we? Um, and uh, greetings, Amber and Elizabeth. We've got people from all over and continue to tell us where you're from. We've got people from New York, British Columbia, Los Angeles. Uh, of course, uh, Nev is from Australia. So Nev, kind of following up, same question. As a healer and an intuitive healer, what has been your practice or practices to cultivate faith, to cultivate trusting where to go with a client or with a patient? Yes, yeah, Scott, because it's, I think for me, it, it was fundamental after a death experience um, and the remembering and the awakening to the gifts that we all have access to. I'm not unique to anyone else. And, and I encourage that with everyone that says, you know, can we, you have this? No, no, we all have this. It's just coming to the point of remembering and reaccessing them that I had to make sure that what was coming through was not a fabrication of my mind. Yeah. Fundamentally, one for the client and for myself, yeah, because that would be misleading and that would be a breach of sacred space. So initially I did a lot of cross-referencing and I didn't cross-reference from up, down, left and right. I cross-referenced from every way and every possible um, standing point and beyond that to make sure that what was coming through was aligned with truth. Once I had that, um, I was able then to know that what was coming through, I, I didn't have to allow the mind to question it whether it was or wasn't. Yeah. And I was able to move into that space of, of being, to, to be um, aligned with the one that is um, steering this body vessel. Mm. Yeah. The one that existed prior to the, the, the mind being present to be able to think the thought. Mm. And so once I had that, um, and then working with modalities, Reiki was beautiful where I started to be able to do the distant healing and I got it because I understood the quantum field on a different level. And, 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 I, and I tested that with my daughter and, and, and we did some tests that she couldn't have known the time frames. And I went earlier and I said, this is part of the cross-referencing. And, 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 and it was boom, like I could feel that. And she was 800 kilometers away. And I'm like, wow, this stuff's, this is beautiful. And this is, this is the collapse of the whole of what it is to be linear and at that point we merge into that that field of oneness that we all are you know which in essence is love which we're returning to to remember and and when i was able to know that my mind couldn't doubt it anymore mm. i was able just to do it from that space of being yeah and so so, so there is no doubt it does come up but it's able to be able to see that from a point of awareness and to just come back to that cross-referencing to be able to go, okay, what is that? Yeah. And then universally, whether it's spoken through the client or other people, confirmation comes. Yeah. So a big thing with what I do is, is initially on a, on a first consultation is when I work with a client um, or another being, I, I, I don't want to know their story. And it's not to be dismissive or to dilute their journey. But what it is, is that our system holds information. Yeah through the body, through the biofield, through, through uh, the fields within fields, you know, past life, this life. And, and, and these pieces of information come through and, and I'll see them as either visions, feeling, I often sense the client's pain, suffering, or even joy. Um, and I hear certain words, but I don't go into the playback of their podcast because that's their sacred space. And I don't go watch the series playback of the little vision that comes through because that's also their sacred space. And then at that point, it might be I'm scared and alone and I don't know where I belong. Now, if this is relatable to them from birth to wherever they are at this point of their human journey, a simple acknowledgement, and we can unwind that. We can allow it to be released and come back into a coherent pattern. At that point, the mind can't say, uh, yeah, but he had a preconceived idea of my journey. So, so the mind can't step in. So now the effectiveness of the healing is, is um, becomes so potent 
at that point because mine can't step in. Now, following that, because we've established that, we can then say, okay, what exactly do you want to work with? Because they know now that the mind can't step in and say, well, he's working with preconceived idea or, or playing with, uh, um, uh, with with prompting with words, you yeah, know, or feeling around like that. And so I suppose that's where I come from with that. And then it becomes it becomes a a beautiful dance of acknowledgement where there is no judgment, preconceived ideas, conditions, or expectations, and we meet on a level of consciousness. And, 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 and it's beautiful to meet there without having a concept of what that is, because what it is is experiential. In that space, it becomes very, very sacred. You know, and they reconnect and they remember what that is. When you hold people in this space, as, as you all will understand, um, there's magic there. Yeah? And we can alleviate their pain and suffering. Now, for me, and it's only from my journey and, and I've experienced many different modalities myself mm -hmm. and I'm not here to say that any is more or less effective but for me if we've had the experience do we need to re-experience it again the trauma mm -hmm. that is not to say that we don't have emotion attached to it do we need to go back into it to re-experience it to heal from it and so my analogy is if you step in dog poo and we're learning how to not step in dog poo again do we need to step into it yeah to take the learning or can we just release the information around that through deeper awareness and through the process to allow them then to transition and to be free. That's it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. the, to really access the, the healing or the, the transformation without having to read, to do that like secular human patterning thing that we all get into. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, and sometimes it is needed. I'm not here to, to, to speak um, in what is or isn't. But for me, on my journey, um, that's, that, that's what I felt was the easiest path. Or not the easiest path, the path that was most effective. I just didn't feel that I had to keep on reliving things um, to re-experience them, to heal from my trauma. Yeah. Well, what... But I honour that because without that, I wouldn't be able to understand where I am now. <laughs> you know? It's this, this is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful honoring, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, I have this beautiful way of sharing duality with people and we'll just share it very briefly, you know, we have happiness only to understand sadness, because if we walked around with happiness all our lives, we wouldn't know what it was until we got sadness. Mm -hmm. We're like, whoa, <laughs> really like that happiness stuff. Yeah, like it. And then we come to a deeper understanding that, hey, well, hang on, how can we like happiness more than sadness? Because we would know happiness without sadness. Whoa, okay, now we're somewhere else. Whoa, thank you, thank you, thank you for both of them. At that point, we then go into deeper understanding and with the healing process and the tools that we are identified as happiness and sadness. When we were younger, we were told, oh, you're happy today, boy. Oh, you're sad today, boy. You're good today, boy or girl. You're happy today. At that point, we became identified with the emotion. This for me is the trap of the matrix that we cycle, that you spoke into, that we cycle in and out of. We, we, we live a, a, an existence in the present based on past. Yes. Yeah, that we are identified with the emotion. Now we have to know it to know one to understand the other. Absolutely. And everything is sacred and everything has to be there for us to be where we are. Yeah, but when we can understand this, we can step away from it and we become that which it was formed from or formed from to be the human experience of duality, only to understand one, to know the other. That's and in that space, beautiful. we can you know really where, energy. where that takes us now. By the way, uh, Eleanor has a question, which will be a good one for Robin to tackle, and maybe Trish. But isn't that one of the highest levels of awareness that we can reach just absolute presence to what is you know in enlightenment is not being happy all the time mm -hmm. uh, the people that i've met that have the most enlightened moments i don't even i don't know if anybody is enlightened all the time but um i've met a lot of deeply evolved beings that have a pretty significant number of enlightened moments and there's a lot of moments of just being fully present to what is. And sometimes what is, is very sad. Sometimes what is, is very um, uncomfortable. And mm. just being present with that discomfort, being present with that, without judging 
that sadness is better than is worse than happiness, right, uh, is a state of evolution that hopefully we're all going to get to one of these days. Um, yeah. here's, a, here's a question from Eleanor. And again, for all of our people on Facebook and Zoom, we love your questions. Eleanor's from Vancouver Island, British Columbia. And she writes, at age 79, I'm still learning about healthy relationship. That's in quotes. And this is very timely, as a friend and myself had yet another blow up. Uh, she continues with, we really seem to trigger one another. She's 20 years younger than myself, yet as beings on a spiritual path, that makes no difference. We obviously care a lot about each other since we keep coming back to talk and see what's going on within ourselves. It's an interesting journey. Um, and uh, she acknowledges that it's an opportunity for growth and healing. So to Robin, um, any thoughts, Robin, on that? Yeah, I'm having some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, man. The first thought that comes to mind, Eleanor, is, and thank you so much for your humility and in, in posting this question or this dilemma. I, I, I am somebody who's highly, highly sensitive and I have very particular boundaries that I like people to operate in when they're dealing with me. And um, I don't give, my friendship is not cheap. So I'm navigating this myself. And what I'm finding is that there are some beautiful opportunities. There's always a beautiful opportunity when there's a trigger, but sometimes there's a beautiful opportunity with the other if they are willing enough and conscious enough to lean into that with you and their game for doing that real raw vulnerable thing. It's the deepest friendships and the deepest beautiful moments can happen in that dynamic where you're just like, oh, I just feel like a little girl that wants to be liked and doesn't know how to ask someone to play with me and I'm jealous and all this stuff. It's, it can be so beautiful. And then some people are just not safe enough or conscious enough to lean in and do that with, in which case the boundary becomes internal and it's just, I don't need you to respect my boundary. I am the boundary. And I just simply don't play with this person anymore. <laughs> and um, so this is something that I'm dancing with. So I think it's a matter of if this person is mirroring you, then yay. And if they're game to lean into that with you, then yay. And if it ever gets outside of your window of tolerance of like, this is just too activating too often, take break. Take a break. And the, one of my favorite teachers, George Bertelstein, he's the president or he's the founder of the Native American Church in Berkeley. He always says, like, if something's not working for you, is you don't have to be there. Like, you don't even have to play that game, like, at all. There's no explanation, no nothing. You just don't have to be there. <laughs> so if you can't do something with a good heart and a good mind, just don't do it. And I like the simplicity of that. It's like, if I don't, if it's not really working with this friendship, it doesn't feel great and I don't feel inspired to lean in and do the work, you know, I don't have to and you don't have to, but if you want to, you can and it's all just this, this play, it's all for our enjoyment to get irritated, to get excited, to feel love, to feel hate, it's just all God fucking our brains out all the time so we get to choose how we want to play. <laughs> it's a good thing this show is called Straight Talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was invited to the right show then. I did that. <laughs> well, I curse all the time. So what I would love to say, um, just because you brought up George Bertelstein, and I think that this is one of my favorite, it's one of yes. my favorite yes. prayer, it's a really beautiful prayer on daily life and how to integrate um, yeah, integrate medicine work into your life. It's it's a really profound and just simple. It's the simple simple teachings. Mm -hmm. um, Eleanor, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. And Robin, I love where you're at there. And yeah, you don't have to participate in things that that harm yourself and others. Um, I do want to. So what I was looking at earlier is something that Scott posted, I don't know, three years ago, four years ago, <laughs> I'm going to like quote you, Scott, because it, it really like dropped into my brain is the purpose of our most intimate relationships 
is to raise consciousness. And in my work, it's my, my work is really about touching codependency, right? It's, a, it's really about dissolving the levels of social societal constructs that we participate in kind of like what Nev was saying is like if we want to live in the non-duality mm. that it's about looking at how we were programmed or how we were taught to and so part of this of, of looking at um this experience with another person is is to not make them a to take space like robin said connected timeouts is what scott calls them <laughs> Oh, I like it. Problem about them. Who's feeling the feelings? This is what this is what I say. Who's feeling the feelings? Well, I'm feeling the feelings. <laughs> so if I'm the one upset, then it's my responsibility to really take ownership of that, to get into self-empathy, to get into self-sourcing those those needs, and then come to it from a different place. Um, it, it, here's a here's a real life example. Is I just took a new job that I really wanted. And what I recognized that there was something that just totally flipped me out. And what I realized is that it's not about the job itself or about the people I'm working with. It's literally about how I can self honor, like my nervous system. There's aspects of like last minute things that I just messes with my nervous system. And I, I don't need to put that on anybody else. And I don't need to put anybody else through this suffering or whatever, you know, it's, it's not like it was just uncomfortable because I was told that it was uncomfortable for one. <laughs> and, and it's an opportunity for me to like, Oh, to dial it in like, Oh, you know what? I don't know if I want to put that level of anxiety on myself or other people so I can shift and renegotiate reality with them. right now, shifting and re renegotiating reality together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <coughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. Um, well, we have these two masters. And so I've asked Nev if he would be willing to do a little homeopathic version of his integrative healing treatment on Trish. Um, and they both have agreed. Um, and so I'm going to actually kind of put the spotlight on both of you together. Uh, and Nev, maybe just take it away. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So anyone that's, that's viewing, I'll speak through everything so you can get a feel and a sense of where we're at. Um, it will be very, very intimate with Trish, um, honoring her space. She will understand exactly what's going on. Um, but you will still be very engaged in this. I'm working with information that exists in all of our fields uh, in and around us. Um, and, and, and what I'm looking to do, and, and it's not me just doing it alone, I'm working with you as the individual, in this case, Trish. And this is where the, the understanding of self-healing and self-empowerment starts to, 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 to begin to be remembered and grow. For me, it's fundamental. It's fundamental that um, I'm not the healer. I'm a facilitator of something um, that is greater than what we are, but in essence, what, who and what we are, okay? Um, and so the first thing I always do is I've already opened my space in this, this room through my ceremony. Um, and ceremony can be for anyone, can be as simple as prayer, or it can be a ritual um, of any sort, yeah, where we're really honoring and we're coming back to who we are, okay? Not the one that we are with the mind, but the one we, who we are in essence, yeah? We're honoring all things. And at that point, we've become um, uh, non-separate from by our identity. Yeah. And so the first thing I do is I always ask is permission to connect into this space of this being, this one known as Trish. Yeah. So Trish, do I have your permission to connect in? Okay. Yes. And so, thank you. And so what I do is then I, I connect in and this is a beautiful way because what happens is, is we connect in and I usually, what I do is I'll say, okay, I'm going to put my hand on your left shoulder. And so this is a sensing, just like we sense the sun and the mind doesn't come to say, Oh, what's that? What's that? And it's just hot or the wind on our face. This is the same. Okay, so we don't need to do anything because we are this, yeah? And so I just, you may sense something, it may be heat, tingling, weight, or none of that, and it may be nothing, and that's all right too. So we're just gonna connect in here, my hand on your left shoulder, and just tell me if and when you do, feel a connection. Yes. Yeah, very good. 
So this is the acknowledgement. Okay, this is beautiful. And so from here now, I'm just going to see, and I feel around the body system, yeah, but not the body as such to see what information comes up. Now, anything we speak into is not to be critical at all. It's just our journey, our experience. We are collectors of information. <laughs> That's what it is to be human. Yeah. And but often we haven't been shown how to release this information. And this is what this beautiful sharing is about. So so the first thing that comes up for me is this, this block around your throat. And, and it has to do with some information involving your mum. And if I have to go back to a specific age, it's from the age of three to five. Do you understand this? Yes. And if not. Yes, very good. And so you understand. So through this simple acknowledgement, this energy, and you may feel this energy around your throat or your main novel start to then um, come back into a coherent pattern, but we're honoring this because this information had to occur for you to be here in this very moment, yes? And this is very moment is, is where the sacredness is. So we just acknowledge this. And so as I start to move this information around, words or the sensations of feeling is, is stuckness comes up, yeah? And we're gonna acknowledge that, yes? Mm. Pure love, pure life. And so I start to feel emotion, like I almost want to cry. And there's this deep anger as we start to wind like layers of an onion. You know, we start to wind this way. This ties down into your heart and it goes down into, I suppose, let's say your pelvis, your root chakra. Let's just sit with this. Do you understand this? Yes. Yeah, so acknowledge this pure love, pure life. All things sacred. Honoring that which you are honoring, all things that came before you. For without it, you would not have this understanding, this learning. And remember who and who and what you are as a divine being or pure love and pure light. And you can feel this anger start to lift, you see, this feeling, this memory. And as I breathe in and breathe out, all I'm doing is assisting you to breathe out this energy that needs to be released. Energy isn't right or wrong or good or bad. It's just there remnants of an experience. And so some happiness comes through here and we acknowledge this as well, as we start to unwind this information. And your system on my system, I'm no longer stuck. And that's, that's beautiful. So we wanna, you know, this other stuff, there's, there's the pole opposite. We wanna acknowledge this and feel this. This kind of this information sits in your in your in your lower back. So I'm holding space in the spine, probably uh, L4, L5. I'm guided, you know, and this information that comes through and it kind of tucks in, and it's a misalignment through the spinal system. The spinal system is the fluid system that, before we had arms and legs, we were a sack of fluid. So everything came out of this. And so we often come out of misalignment with this through our experiences. And here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the information that comes through. I've chosen this path, but I don't know what this is. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. We acknowledge this. You will begin to remember because you already know, you see. But our mind likes to step in, it likes to change its costume. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're coming back into now, this is the, this is the thymus. And beautiful, 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 beautiful energy center. So we're just going to acknowledge, it just wants to draw me into here to bring the energy that's required, to bring coherence, to bring love and light into this space of the being, the body vessel that you are. And we're just allowing this other information to rise up through the spine, out through the top of the head. There we go, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, this comes down to into the solar plexus, maybe, um, uh, you know, it's just around there. And it ties in with um, restriction for you to be able to breathe into the wind work that you want to do on the level that you know and you understand this, yes? Yes. Yes, very good. There we go. Learning taken, deeper understanding, awareness. And so we open the expansion here. And so now it starts to just show me, these are all the times that I've cried. And if this sits up in here, like at the uh, top of your nose, at the, uh, the, the bridge of your, where your eyes are. So we're in here at the moment. And we're just acknowledging and seeing what needs to be seen. And that which isn't seen, isn't ready, that's fine as well. Keep in mind that there is no right or wrong. 
all the information that comes up is safe written. Here. At this point here, you start to, your system starts to feel love within yourself again, you see. And the love that you feel mm, is not like anything that is depicted or that we've known because that is for the mind. Here, this one here. <laughs> this is you, you see. Mm. There we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then we just bring in some. And now, allow the integration as it needs to be on all levels. The space of remembering, the space of love, the space of truth, the space of you. Remember. You are love and light and truth and knowing. Okay, there you go. Okay, that's a little something there and you can just slowly come back to here. <laughs> and remember, yeah, Let's see, this is beautiful. So it's a little bit about what I do. Um, when I say I, I, as this body vessel. Yeah, and so <laughs> there's, yeah. and all I ask is that I don't want people to look for anything, but just a sense, is there something different before we engaged in this beautiful sharing and remembering, yes, there is. You almost feel the universalness of yourself without it being a concept of the mind. Yeah, yeah. And for anyone else who's watching, this, this is through a morphic field. So it's picking up on whatever you need as well. So you will take what you need from the sharing. So this wasn't exclusive to any one person because as the collective that we are, we are interwoven with each other. Yeah, we are one consciousness. There is something in this for each of you. So just be open to receive that. Thank you. Mm. Trish, is there anything you feel comfortable or would like to share about your experience just now? Hmm. You know, it's what my brain made up <laughs> in memory. Um, I'm really doing a like a little backstory is that I'm I'm doing a lot of anti-racist work right now. I just finished a six-week program that's looking at reality, constructed reality. Um, and around three to five is when you really start developing identity, personality, and ego. And my mother was my main, the main person in my life that taught me language, which is the way that I think, the language that I use, it's the, the way that I see the world. Sometimes I even hear her in my brain talking to me, <laughs> right? And so, of course, that would be the expression of self uh, through my language, through the way that I see the world, the way that I'm taught to categorize feelings and the, the duality, the yin-yang experience of, of how I see the world. Like, of course, that that would be, it's like, perfect time to drop it into my soul, you know, all the way down to my, uh, to the seat of my being into my energetic space and how it ties to my work. I, I mean, I know this sounds a little ethereal if I'm kind of still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's perfect timing. I, I thought it was really interesting to be, in the awareness at the base of my nose here. I was like, oh, that's a very interesting place to be in that, that place. Mm. Spend very much time there. Mm. And so this is just, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's nice just to be able to hold the space of the experience and that the relationship to it, to the body vessel is just an, it's just 
information as we start to unwind it as layers of an onion, other stuff presents and presents and presents. And, and what, what, what you may notice is that as you move through your experience, um, your interactions with yourself, other people, the way you sense, the way you feel, the noticing may change. Yeah, as we come, come back to more of what we are. You know, and this is what the process is like, what I'm sharing, like Robin, what Robin does, the work she does, you know, and I'm sure that she will agree. This is where the magic is. Um, for me, this is why I do what I do. Yeah, it's not for me. Um, because I know that the way that what it does for you and what you do as the one who's receiving, and remember you're doing the healing and the empowerment that it brings on a level that is not spoken. Yeah has the flow on effect to so many people that we interact with. Yeah. yeah. At that point, we become the gift yeah. to ourselves and to others. Mm. It's beautiful. Um, we're we're going to hear more from Nev tonight. Um, and of course, we're going to go to Robin in a moment. But I do want to direct people uh, to Nev's website. It's Healing with Nev, N-E-V. Healing with Nev um, and dot com dot AU. Nev is in Australia. So make sure you get the dot com and the dot AU in there. Now, here's the most important thing to see, which is in the upper right hand corner. If you click free 15 minute consultation and then give him his name and email and a little bit about yourself, he will give you a free phone consultation. Now, how cool is that? Um, so that's very generous of you. Nev, very generous. So anybody who's wanting to drop in and experience Nev, um, that's the way to go. Go to healingwithnev.com.au. And, um, and I'm actually going to do that this week. So I'm looking forward to, to my time with you now. Thank you. I have a question for the three of you. And it's been on my brain for quite some time. Something that I, I think about a lot. And especially being in a spiritual community, um, being in the, we'll call it, um, United States spiritual community, where people are often seeking and collecting experiences and collecting um, spiritual experiences for egoic purposes. The question is, is kind of a, a broad question, and I've been thinking a lot about time for integration and honoring the time for an integrative space. So as, as a personal experience when I was younger, I found, I, I found holotropic breath work and was like, oh my God, this is what's going to heal my sexual trauma. And I just did a ton of it. And then I just started taking more and more workshops and classes. And what occurred to me years later that I was a little burnt and that I needed actually years at that point to integrate the work that I, that I had done. Here, here's another example. Like I, there's this hundred page book called how to be an adult that my therapist gave me very early on. And it took me a year to read a hundred pages because concepts like healthy anger I had to wrap my reality, my understanding of reality, that that was, a, that was an actual thing. So I'm curious if you guys can, you know, humans, um, to, can speak a little bit about the importance of taking the time to integrate and, and what that, what the process or what the, the self-loving piece of, of taking integration space might look like for you and for your clients. I I have one thing I want to say, and I'm going to withdraw and let Nev and Robin tackle that wonderful question. But what came to my mind is the reminder that there are 8 billion unique journeys going on right now. Mm -hmm. 8 billion unique human journeys, and every single human journey is unique. And so the, top, the way we process our wounding the way the wounding that we receive, the challenges that we face, the ways that we process it, and the amount of time it takes, there are eight billion different journeys 
along those lines. And I, I know it's kind of obvious, but I think it's just important for us to remember that because mm -hmm. so often we tend to compare. We mm -hmm. tend to compare mm -hmm. our experience. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do it. You know, it's very human. Like, how come I haven't healed my trauma faster? Right? How come I have it, whatever it is? And then in the moment, we're comparing ourselves to somebody or something that we think is the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put that out there as, as a thought. And then I'm going to remove myself. Um, <laughs> you, who, wants to, who wants to tackle it next? I'll chime in a bit. I mean, it's kind of a spinoff of what you just shared, Scott, is that every person is so different. There's just no standard. There's just, there's just no fucking standard, really. I'm sorry, I'm passionate today. There's no standard because the, what I found is that you can get, you can have the same medicine, two different people. One person might be able to integrate in two days. The other person might need years. And so I think what's most important is that they have a mentor or a guide that can mirror them and help them navigate what could that look like for them and give them ideas so they can cultivate a relationship with themselves that they understand what they need for their own integration. For mm -hmm. me, I've even tricked myself. I thought like, I'm a medicine woman. I was trained hardcore. I can do these medicines back to back to back. Yeah. I got this. I, I know how to do this. I've been doing it for years. Wrong. All of a sudden, I accidentally had like ayahuasca. I had a bunch of San Pedro ceremonies already booked up. And then I had toad medicine. And I was not okay. I was like, I was not okay for a couple of weeks. And I'm like, okay. So I'm not as tough as I thought. You know, it's not about being tough. It's that the material that got stirred up, the circumstances of my life, moving, had some court things, had some IRS weird thing from the, didn't believe me I was the, really a single mom, head of household, whatever. It was just all these things added up. And, and I, I was trying to do my normal um, like just, you know, be tough kind of thing. And it was not that I needed a lot of downtime. And so and I know that I have a good enough relationship with myself that I can tell when I need to slow down. I can tell when it's time to have no medicines at all. And then I can feel when it's time again to sit. I, I, I can feel because I've taken that journey with myself. And so I can guide someone else in that. But I'll tell you what, integration is not my favorite thing to guide on. I like to refer my clients to people who specialize in integration because it's, I like like the hardcore work and the integration like, oh, da -da, I'm going to tiptoe around everything now. <laughs> I let my colleagues do that part. Um, but it's so, it, it's so important and it's important that, um, well, that we tackle it in different domains because we have different lines of development. So you can say, oh, just go exercise. Well, that's not gonna do anything for your consciousness or your emotions necessarily, or your body consciousness. You know, it's, we have different lines of development. So I think as more, the more holistic the kind of plan of action can be, the more safe and grounded you're gonna be. It's like, so I kind of make sure that I, um, I'm feeding myself in these different ways, in a gentle way, you know, my nutrition, my exercise, what I'm reading, putting into my body, who I'm allowing to be around me, my naps, my rest, etc. Yeah, thank you. Nev, thank you, Robin. That was really helpful. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Thank you, said Robin. Yeah. Um, yeah, for, for, for me, you know, it's really interesting that and it's part of that human conditioning, I feel, that we get a taste for something and we want to chase it. You know, I want to get there. I want, I want to be like them. I want to be like Mike. Right? Okay. We want to do that. And, 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 and that's normal. That's, that's normal. I did it. And everything I speak and share from, I share from only my own experience. And, but it, it's coming to the point of realization where and we see so many people and it's not to be critical of them because they're just on their own journey. Yeah. You know, that we can be chasing, constantly chasing the next course, chasing the next piece of wisdom, chasing that. And what happens is, is that we miss the learning. We miss what we've, 
we haven't absorbed it and we haven't integrated it in a way that how do we share this what does it mean um uh, what about when i hit a hurdle you know because we've got shit that's going to come up in our life we're doing a thing called human you know, and it's that that's 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 our reality how do we navigate that how do we have deeper understanding of our environment before we get the next piece yeah and then we get to the point where we realize there is no pieces <laughs> and that we've got it all here <laughs> but we had to transition this to have the remembering yeah mm. to, to to be able to be here and not all get that and that's fine once again that's fine too you know we're really honoring each and every person's journey but to, to um, have the opportunity through deeper awareness and understanding. However that comes to you, remember there's many pathways. Um, there's something very, very special, you know, because then we start to step away. So, so I liken it, I say, um, people ask me what I do and I had difficulties terming it and I still do because there's many modalities, but if I call it any one modality, yeah, Reiki, for example, it becomes very, very foresighted in the concept of the context. Yeah, and any of the others, they become foresighted. And so they become limited in what they are, as beautiful as they are. So we have to come to a point where I let all the walls fall away. Yeah. And it just becomes pure experience. Everything just becomes this melting pot of consciousness, of ancient wisdom, of remembering. Yeah. And then part of that is the integration. We have to go through what it is to chase something to understand that, whoa, hang on, maybe we're not giving it time. Am I missing something? Or maybe there was nothing to be missed. And just to allow this, allow this, allow this. Yeah. Mm, thank you all for answering the question. We have some wonderful questions um, and comments. Um, so this is from Elizabeth, and it's a deep question. Um, so thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing it. She says, I'm a Reiki master, and I recently took an additional quantum Reiki course. After the quantum ignition, I no longer see my client's needs. It's almost as if I'm not connecting with them at all on some occasions, even though they always say they feel better. Prior to taking this course, my guides always showed me the source of their pain, but now I'm doubting my own ability to heal. Interesting question and interesting challenge. <clears throat> Anybody feel inspired to respond? Yeah. Um, it's late for me, so I've just got to gather my thoughts. When, when we are working with a modality, I feel that there, there is a spirit of that modality. There are, there are teachers and energies that are training us as well as with our inner guidance. And when we hit a roadblock or something like that, there's information there. So it could be something like a, what I call a fertile void where you are forced to suspend all of that creativity because something is germinating, something big is trying to kind of find its place in you and then it's it's going to come out. And so I always trust that. I always trust when I'm not inspired or I'm having a dry spell that something is coming, there's a reason. And it also can be redirecting. So for example, if I'm working with a particular modality, particular tool, but all of a sudden I'm not feeling inspired to do that, like I just not, there's no energy is not flowing then that tells me that medicine and that tool is communicating with me that it, it it's not time for that that there there's something new is coming i'm in a lesson and so i wait and i wait until the intuition and the inspiration comes and guides me and so if i were you and i was feeling this it, it sound, it's it's hard to tell from just a text but it could be your own mind telling you that you're not effective and so it's kind of psychosomatic or it's a new layer of trust that you're learning to lear work with that energy in a whole new way where you're not able to see and you just have to trust you just have to follow through or it could be telling you stop this isn't for you <laughs> and only you will know <laughs> what that is by really deepening your relationship with your heart opening your heart letting your heart and let the information come in to guide you 
what is what is this telling me? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you, Robin. Mm -hmm. Trish, Nev, anything you want to add for Elizabeth's question? Oh, look, I think that was beautifully, beautifully spoken into by Robin. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there's so much truth in in in, in that sharing. Um, from my experience, if I can just add a little bit, um, sometimes um, we hit these points and we are looking for a similarity. So we, the mind has conditioned us to believe that we're empowered by um, the response, what we're feeling, what we're seeing um, from, from our clients. And, and then when we have a new experience or a new attunement or a new learning, the mind says, I am not the same as what I was before. Therefore, I am not effective and a fear response starts to take place. Yeah. Mm. And so we begin to be removed from actually what we're doing, remembering that any new experience is not the same as the other. And I, and I use this analogy, um, you know, if you go and eat alligator, someone that's part of the human conditioning, if you go and eat alligator, someone will say, hey, that tastes like uh, lemon and chicken, right? And you go, no. <laughs> And they go, yeah, but it tastes like rabbit and mango. And you go, no, it tastes like fucking alligator. And they go, yeah, but. Yeah, so everyone's chasing this experience or, or, or that they can compare it to something else. So I suppose um, you know, the, the wise words that Robin shared, and, and if I can just add a little bit, is to just allow, you know, just allow the experience for what it is, okay, and understand that the mind's trying to make a relationship to something that was. Yeah, this is something new. And if your clients are giving you feedback that is, as you said, um, supportive of and conducive with healing, then, then be with that and catch the mind and have the awareness that the one that is speaking from there is not who we are. And also that that which we think we need or receive is not outside of us. <laughs> It exists in us we're just going through a process of remembering and awakening to it again and so it never has gone <laughs> mm. we're just remembering so if that helps in any way um, yeah thank you elizabeth actually wrote um earlier she said i think ned answered my question nev answered my question um and then she added just now robin then makes so much sense to me in light of the fact that i've just recently been led to ceremony. So, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to get to a couple other questions, but um, here's a comment from Sarah. Sarah writes, I wanted to comment that breathwork itself is considered an integration practice for medicine and other healing work, but it can in and of itself bring up a lot. For me, integration can come in so many forms, time in nature, journaling, self-reflection, self-care, as Robin mentioned. As I think Nev was alluding, our wholeness is all there is that's there all the time. We just need to become awakened to it. Right. And I think finding the time and space to make all the internal connections is sacred and critical work. Mm -hmm. uh, and Elizabeth just said thank you to the panelists. Um, there's a couple more questions that I want to bring up. Joy asks, since we are in an experiential world, we go through all these emotions and learn. When is it the right time to step away and let go of these emotions? And how can we still be human? Good question. Good questions and comments tonight. Thank you, everybody. I don't think we let go of the emotions. I think it's part of the ride. I also agree with that. I've joked many times that I reincarnated just to come to Disneyland. <laughs> they have a sale right now, $83 a day, California residents. <laughs> I, I'm just like, oh yeah, we're, we're doing the human thing. So, you know, I came here to emote. Yeah. And to be in this body and whatever experience that that comes with. When I emote. <laughs> Oh, and boy, you know, food, sex, dancing, walking. I'm 
don't get me wrong. Give me a little bit of like crying and suffering. Like, and I'll, I'll just eat that up too. <laughs> I am here to enjoy. I mean, hey, have you all been to a theme park? Cause you know, sometimes it stinks and the kid barfed on the side. Oh God. Oh my God. And sometimes your person that you're with, or maybe the people that you're with are like, I'm miserable. This is hot. It just is the experience. This is what makes it fun. And then you go home and you tell your story about it, right? You, you have this, this human experience. Otherwise you're just, you know, this spiritual amoeba <laughs> we'll call it for a lack of a better word and we're all we're all doing it together in the collective consciousness and, and we don't have any definition it's like hey how was that human experience that you had that you know that like blip of time that vacation you had and you're like whoa that was some fun stuff you know <laughs> yeah i think the only thing i want to add is i agree that it is very much about um fully being present and experiencing what is alive and recognize that there are no bad emotions. There are no negative feelings. There are uncomfortable feelings. <laughs> there are uncomfortable emotions. And so it is important for us to have compassionate understanding for ourselves and each other when we're having uncomfortable feelings, you know? So it's like finding that balance of, as both of the ladies said, to fully experience it and not judge it, but also for us to not spiritually bypass that some of those feelings are really friggin' uncomfortable. And for us to have compassion for ourselves or each other when we are having uncomfortable feelings. Yeah. There was um, another question I want to get to. And again, I'm so appreciating the questions of people that are coming through. Uh, back to the integration. You, you did a good job with the whole integration question. Nicole asks, what are the clues when you need more integration time? What are oh, the clues? I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take it away, Robin. Ooh. When you're very overwhelmed with the information that came through, for example, um, I had a non-dual experience, complete non-dual experience, um, total disillusion of the ego. Um, and I saw the face of God, <laughs> not the face, but the grid, the, the freak, the force field. And it's, um, when I came out of that, I was very shooken up by reality and I couldn't wrap my brain around it. And I, so I felt agitated by the thought of what was revealed. So if somebody were to have a big, you know, have a big breakthrough about childhood wounds or, you know, their what, ancestral stuff or um, their sexuality or things like this, the fact that you feel a bit agitated by it is a good one, number one indicator that you need some time to just let it sink in. Um, also, when you can find yourself um, jumping from, I like what Trish mentioned, like jumping from experience to experience, or maybe it was Ned, but like jump, you find, finding yourself wanting, wanting more, wanting more, wanting more, wanting more. That's an indicator that you are not settling in and fully appreciating and being with the big gift that you've already been given. It's like this chaser mentality. Um, and also for me, if I'm having, um, confrontations, you know, if there's three confrontations in a row and the common denominator is me, it's an indicator that there's something alive here that I need to sit with. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, all right. We are in the home stretch. I have uh, Trish, absolutely. <laughs> I love, I love talking about immigration. Um, so, so for some of my, my clients, what I find is that when they jump from lily pad to lily pad, it's hard to, uh, like, to allow your brain to catch up, to allow your, your brain and your body to catch up with your spirit. Because sometimes we can be like, like, like for example, there's this, uh, this anti-racist course, it was just like looking at the 5,000 years of history. And I'm like, oh, and it, it's going to take me some time 
to walk a different walk, right? It's, it's going to take me to some time to integrate the way that I move and speak into the world. For example, I'm no longer using the word slave. That doesn't work anymore. Master slave duality doesn't work anymore. Like these have to, I'm looking at the word tribe. Like, where do I use that word? Is that inclusive? Is that, does that actually serve the indigenous cultures? Like I have to look at these things and for my brain to catch up with already where my spirit is, it takes me a moment, you know, it's, it's going to take me some, some time. So, so for my clients, it's like when they're jumping from the lily pad, the lily pad, it's like the, 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 that graspy piece of like, <laughs> what's the next thing? How, how can I fix it? Whatever it is. It's like, oh, I mean, I'm not going to suggest that you do, <laughs> you know, meditation and, and exercise, but allow yourself to just walk in the world with a new perspective on mm-hmm. solving the layers of the, the layers of reality or the filters or the veils of perception that you have on reality just takes a little moment to go because it's a subtle shift. You're like, oh, chick, chick. you know, the work that Nev did with me today, I'm not going to assume that that's going to just be complete and integrated like and this is years of this is years of trying to understand why i'm tired that's that's one piece so to answer the question if i if i'm really just tired that that's a good time for me to look to step back like okay where do i need to readjust or realign the t- the places where um i'm really hungry like really hungry like oh just where am i there like the, the shifts in my body, right? Is where I'm looking at where do I need to integrate? So, Nev, how about you? Can we? Yeah, look, I, I think, I think I feel all of that. Um, when our mind comes to speak on our behalf, mm-hmm. it's the most critical one. I should be here, I should be that. Should I be integrating, shouldn't I? Fuck, I just, picked this up earlier last time how can this is taking me so much fucking longer this time you know and we keep on going and and so one of the tools i share with my clients is this word called awareness and it's it's the bomb all right and so as soon as we catch that the mind is having a dialogue on our behalf yeah mm. because we're being told something we already know yeah we're being told that the apples are green, but we already know the apple's green. So who keeps telling us? Yeah. So we want to catch that one. Yeah. And when we have the aware, and all we do is that because the mind will say, oh, geez, I, I should have done that quicker. I integrated sooner. Why didn't I see that sooner? That's the mind. It's just changed its costume. Yeah. Okay. And, and we want to be gentle with that. We want to have awareness that we're able to see that. Awareness of the awareness. Wow. And we sit in gratitude of that. At that point, we allow the greatest transition. Yeah, integration no longer becomes integration. It just becomes. Yeah, and the mind can't be speaking on our behalf at that point, telling us what or we should or shouldn't have done or could have done or didn't do or in a certain time frame, which takes us away, very very subtly, and then gets more and more subtle from that which we are. But the important thing is to not be in the battle with that because whether you're a goodie fighting a baddie or a baddie fighting a goodie, you're still in a battle. Mm -hmm. This is part of the paradigm, you see? And it becomes very subtle. So we have awareness of that. And we catch that and go, aha. Yeah. At that point, we start to just go, okay, this is as it's meant to be. Okay, do I need to do anything right now? No, not really, but what was that dialogue? I don't even know what that was. Ah, because it's run away and hide for a little while. It's changing its costume again. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. I just want to add something that's burning to come out in regards to this really briefly is because there's another way of looking at this. Like, you know, there's all these lenses that we can look at this integration. What I'm hearing is we're talking about, when we're talking about integration, we're talking about accelerating consciousness and how it develops. And so like, I know that consciousness only progresses to a more evolved or higher 
state, more mature state, when there's enough holes in the current paradigm that it's even willing to adopt. So essentially, when we're having these big experiences or some kind of healing experience, we're poking a hole in the current paradigm. Depending on how many holes are there will depend on how quickly it will crumble. And then it's just a matter of time before we recalibrate and become this, move from this place, like Trish mentioned, moving naturally from this place of this new perspective, this new shift. And they say in my studies that generally speaking it takes about five years to integrate from going from one stage of consciousness to the next because we're kind of just like oh that doesn't work anymore oh that doesn't work either oh that really doesn't work alcohol is not working this isn't working oh now all of a sudden i wake up after all these holes of it not working and i'm just moving from this place of not using the word slave because it's just not in my consciousness anymore. It was associating two values and virtues that were in the lower stage of consciousness. But now I'm like, ding, 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 ding. oh, new value system. So now I just move from this new place. I just wanted to add that piece because I kind, kind of geek out on the human development spectrum and just like, yeah, you know, like we just can't, we can't speed it up too much because if we speed it up too much, it's like a rubber band. It'll boing back and digress. And so we just kind of like accept that it's going to take time. <laughs> I always say um, you can only transform as fast as your perspective can shift. Mm. My perspective can shift, but this matter, like human matter. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, meat bag. <laughs> it's like, wow. All right. Come on now. I'm moving faster than you are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. I want to read some comments that have come in. Um, Mo Stevenson, and this is from Facebook, wrote, wow, adding the spine work into the meditation, that is amazing. So thank you, Mo, for acknowledging that. Heather Caldwell, who's one of our wonderful love coaches, writes, I love this transmission. Thank you, Scott, Trish, Robin, and Nev. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and right now in our Zoom room, a few really valuable things that have been written. Lots of thanks and appreciation. Uh, Eleanor writes, I've been making lots of notes. It's stuff that I know, but I needed these reminders. And you all have done an excellent job for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Many thanks. Um, Jessica writes, yes, this is how the breathing work comes into play with my coaching to help train the mind. Good point, Jessica. Thank you. Um, and then Celeste writes, also integration can include, can you comprehensively teach it to someone else after coming to the clarity of your own experiences? Well, there's a good question. Well, we kind of answered it earlier. Yeah. Billion realities, and we're only including people with one personality or reality. <laughs> realities on this planet so eight billion strategies for integration but i think that a good coach or these three humans can probably help you find your your strategies for integration i think, I think what she's saying is once you have grounded the lessons can you teach it? And yeah, essentially that's what we're all doing. We, we can only teach what we have embodied. We can only take people where we've gone. So I think that's what she's saying. Yeah, that's kind of what I, I interpreted it too. All right, we're in the home stretch. Okay. And last question. Most of the people that are attracted to watching our show, uh, whether it's Straight Talk or Saturday Night Live, are caregivers, light workers, healers, and as a result, very empathic, uh, deeply caring about the world, about their clients. Um, so my question is tips from each of you as to how to manage that deep care for the world, deep care for clients while feeling the pain of the world, while feeling the pain of the clients um, and finding that balance of taking care of yourself, acknowledging uncomfortable feelings while still being effective in the world. <laughs> right. Tips tips and practices for that. And I, I'll start with Robin, because I think that uh, Robin, that might be right up your wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm a hard ass about. <laughs> like, because I'm a very, very extremely sensitive person. 
I, in the past, have been told I was very porous, you know, just absorb, 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 like loss of identity, just swaying with the wind. And I had to get strong in myself. Um, and one tool that I practice with my students is I even have them do eye, eye gazing exercises and I tell them to place their hand on their belly button go three inches below and directly in the center is their center of gravity. And I teach them that no matter, you know, to no matter what happens in these sessions, that they can always go back to themselves and to have like a visceral place in the body to go back to. I first get them to practice feeling where that place is and, and feeling what it's like to be in their own energy. And then from that place decide how far do I want to go into the other? And how far do I want to let the other to come into me and practice feeling where those energetic boundaries are? And then when it comes right down to it, it's energetic cutthroat. It's like, nah, you're not getting in here. Sorry. Like, no, like having a really hard and fast boundary with, with people's places and things. Um, and I also teach that after your work with people, a really easy exercise, actually this was shared with me by one of my teachers, is to practice giving that person their energy back three times and really seeing it shamanically or in the sacred imagination and pulling back your energy three times. And then just understanding, like if you have a story or a narrative of martyrdom or saving the world, to really take a look at that and, and, and be in your lane. What can I actually do, you know? Um, and, and um, declaring your sovereignty like yeah we're sensitive beings but we don't have to live in that story of i'm just so empathic i'm just feeling everything and sometimes in the middle of ceremony i'll throw a headband at one of my clients and be like cover your third eye like i can see they're absorbing everything i'm like come on cover your third eye be strong if you want to hold space you got to learn to be strong and so we practice the embodiment of that and feeling into the nuances beautiful so um, I am imagining you do not suffer energy vampires well, yeah. you know, and, and God bless there are, and I know this is a very judgmental term, but there are people that can show up as an energy vampire, you know, <laughs> bring in and, you know, heal me, heal me, take care of me. And then the caregiver rescuer part of us can get pulled into that. So. Thank you very much, Rob. It's beautiful. Nev, Trish, would you like to address the question? Or yeah, I'll, I'll speak. yeah, I'll speak into that. Um, yeah, I think it's it's important. Um, I know from my own experience that we can easily take on these energies, but that was when I was trying to fix, or trying to be, or was in a space of fear of what was coming through there and what can be seen. And remember that anything that comes only exists, increases in its potency or its effectiveness if we acknowledge it and feed it. And that's a pretty big goal. And there's there's a transition to get to a space where we're able to see that and we're able to be that. You know, we, we things will come and want to present themselves to us in with, when we interact with people, uh, when we're working in the space of healing, um, but we've got to choose to engage in that. And it's not to be disengaged in it either. It's to be present in who we are. Yeah. And it's coming back to uh, what Robin said, when we come to alignment with our sovereignty, that which we are, our being, yeah, exists in all beings. Yeah. Anything else that comes through them is an expression of a fear component or something through the human form. Hmm. Yeah. And so when we have an understanding of that, once again, we, don't want to, we want to be aware when we're in a fight or not in a fight with something, because we're still in that battle. And at that point, we're open, open to be impacted by it. We choose to take it on board. And some people uh, on their journey want to have that. They want to feel that pain. Yeah, it makes them, it does something. And I mean, they're not aware of it or conscious of it, but through awareness, we can go, okay, we have a choice. We have a choice. We have a choice to step into this one or that one, or to not even get on the fucking dance floor. Let's just be here. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that's, a pro, that's a progression. Yeah, and, and that's why it's important that the work that we all share um, 
is accessed by those who are ready. But it's a learning, you know, and if you do feel like you do have something that you've picked up and energy can cross us, we are energetic beings, then go and find a tree. If you have a drum, drum your drum. Yeah. And you don't have to do anything um, because the tree knows you already. Just acknowledge the sentience of it. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you're on the sentience of yourself because at our simplest level, we are all vibration. And if everything is vibration, are we not all equal? Beautiful. All right. Um, I'm going to my uh, partner here, Trish. Trish, any final thoughts? And then I'm going to kind of share everybody's websites and how to get a hold of them. Yeah. I, I want to thank both Nav and Robin tonight for their wisdom and their love and their time and their energy. It's, it's a lot to show up on a call, if, if you all want to know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, kids are upstairs. They were banging on the door for a minute. <laughs> I like, I want my mom. Right. So I really want to, I, I also want to thank our viewers and our listeners for showing up for yourselves tonight to really have this, you know, deeper conversation and to allow the, the subtle shifts of perspective. Um, there's this one question that I, I like to leave with. Um, and, and it's one of the things that I, I, I have it on my, you know, for, for some of us who have, are dissolving codependent patterning, um, what's the most self-honoring choice I can make right here? And this is one of the pieces that has come up through, you know, I'm a retired massage therapist and yes, we, we were trained or I was trained in my schooling is that to keep bringing awareness back, like it's a circle of awareness is what we call it. So I'm, I'm aware of Nev and Robin and Scott, and I'm bringing it back to how well is my body positioned? How is, how am I breathing? And then back to the outward and then back to the inward is the, the place of, that I found to hold my center with other people. So, again, self-honoring choices don't necessarily mean that they're just solely selfish, but what's the, what can I do that will it's a win for everyone. That's my final thought. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I want to just remind people before we, I'm going to go back to Nev and Robin in a moment, but Trish is a brilliant coach and you can learn more about her at her website, which is embodied-happiness.com. Embodied happiness. <laughs> so if you're wanting to embody more happiness in your life, definitely go to Trisha's website and please do continue to come to our street talk show. Um, did you show website? What's that? Yeah, did you show Robin's website? No, I'm going uh, to write Hopefully that. it's up to date. We're about to do that. <laughs> very, very me, me, me. Yes, we are going to Robin's <laughs> website. Um, and Robin, I, I went to you guys all see this photo of her. It is, a, you talk, you know, Trish loves the word sassy. Yeah, this, that's my word, dude. This is a sassy photograph. <laughs> I, I would not mess with that woman. <laughs> that's funny. If you haven't seen anything, go follow her on all the, <laughs> go follow her on social media. I Again. love doing stories. I share on stories. I let my channel flow. I just, lately it's been fiery. Sometimes it's more mellow, but lately it's just been coming in hard. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, I've been, uh, Facebook picked up that you're going to be on my show, so I've been getting your stories in my algorithms. Oh! <laughs> oh yeah. Robin Rivera, you were with a beautiful little girl in uh, one of your stories today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was my baby star. Yep. So here's her website, and then I'm going to have a talk about it. But uh, So you can write it down for anybody listening. It's RobinRiveraIgnites.com. Robin, R-O-B-I-N, Rivera, R-I-V-E-R-A, Ignites, I-G-N-I-T-E-S, dot com. And she expands consciousness and divine leadership. Um, Robin, is there a particular place on the website while we're showing it to people where I should go? Um, let's see, go ahead and scroll down. Right now I'm currently enrolling for the Wealthy Priestess Mastermind. It's a six month sacred business immersion, like 
a very well balance of the shamanic oh, activations and the deep quantum work with also really great strategy. Um, this program would be for a healer or a light worker who wants to embody wealth consciousness and wants a strategy to actually achieve that. I really, really believe that the wealth power is to be in the hands of the healers, the light workers, the shamanas, the witches during these times, because we are super ignited right now. We, we know where to allocate the money. We have creative projects. We know how to be generous. And um, frankly, I just think that it's savvy and smart for the, us to be doing that. And we have at our fingertips access to be able to do that. I mean, I've been able to create um, multiple, multiple six figures in the 18 months, less than less than two years um, by revamping my business strategy, getting super soul aligned and birthing it into the world in this way and this synergistic business model. So I'm um, supporting you know, pretty much the badasses who want to go for it. <laughs> and so on there, there is an application to apply for that program. We do not um, interview all of the applications, but we will, um, we will consider them. And we're really looking for, it's women, and we're really looking for people who want the sisterhood, who are ready to be seen, um, and who want to do the work to embody that next higher level. Well, that's, you know, really speaking to our, our demographic group because we do primarily attract women. Um, so again, go to RobinRiveraIgnites.com and then kind of scroll down to the purple section. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where you can click and apply for a free soul strategy session. Yeah, and I'll have free trainings. I think we're going to do a free training on the 20th. And so it's it's good for you to get to know my body of work before applying so that you feel cool with the shamanic aspects and the way that I deliver and the strategy. Really, I am helping people create um, an irresistible high ticket group offering. And that's really what I love to do. I could do that all day and play in that creative vortex. Um, so in my private Facebook group, it's called sacred business for healers and coaches and there's a buttload of free trainings in there so i invite you in there if it calls you great well thank you robin and i definitely would love to get you on saturday night live when we're doing an empowered we're going to do a women's empowerment oh, show, fun. so we definitely have to have you on for that cool yeah thank you robin for being with us yeah, thank you for having me thank you for asking me and giving us a safe platform for our, our voices and our work to be shared in the way that we uniquely want to share it. So I really yeah. appreciate it. Which, which includes F-bombs. I yeah, know, sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. And Nev, I'm going to go to you one last time here. Thank you very much. And again, I want to remind people that uh, go to his website, healingwithnev.com.au, because he's in Australia. But in the upper right-hand corner, He's offering a free 15 minute consultation. So I really encourage people to take advantage of that. Thank you. And no, thank you so much now for being with us. Thank you both so much for having me on the show. And Robin, for your sharing, it's been beautiful to come together, as you know, it's all on a divine alignment and a divine timing. And, um, and as we know that as we speak into this from where we speak from, it goes out through that field, you know, and it's just little moments where someone has that aha or somewhere on the other side of the world and, and, and becomes empowered to, to walk their path. And we don't even know that we're doing it because it becomes very, very selfless. And so I'm so, so very grateful um, for being part of this space, truly. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks again to our audience. Some great questions today. And I'm sorry that we didn't get to uh, everybody's thoughts, comments, and questions, but the ones we got to were really quite wonderful. Um, and yes, Mark, thank you for what you said about boundaries. I just want to close by inviting everybody to the next two shows. Every weekend, I do uh, two shows, uh, three shows, actually, Straight Talk. And then tomorrow night, it's Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe. And about every two or three months, we do a show all about what's happening because it's really opening up um, with the whole ET movement and with the government finally acknowledging, yes, there um, are 145 cases that we acknowledge of unidentified aerial phenomena. Um, and we're going to have, once again, Danny Sheehan, who has 
been going up and literally representing the whistleblower that you saw on 60 Minutes. Danny's going to be on the show again tomorrow night. He's uh, been back and forth to Washington, D.C. three times in the last three months, meeting with the uh, Inspector General and the Pentagon. Um, Mark Sims, of course, is going to lead the CE6. Uh, we've got Stephen Bassett, who's a very well-respected um, person in the UFO movement. Whitley Strieber, who wrote the book uh, Communion. And Sylvain Rouchon is a new guest. He is connected to an association that has raised $50 million to build the first embassy for our galactic visitors. Um, so it's going to be a really interesting show tomorrow night. Uh, and music by Larissa Stowe, Cornflower. So definitely join us tomorrow night. And the last thing I want to promote is actually, I'm going to have a really special Sacred Sunday show this uh, Sunday morning. Again, one of um, our presenters who's been on Saturday Night Alive a couple of times is Eden Amadora. And she does um, similar work really to what we've been talking about tonight. She's an ecstatic embodiment guide. And we're going to be talking about uh, sacred sexuality and erotic health. And why is that on my Sacred Sunday show? Because it's sacred and it is divine. And whether you're single or in a relationship, uh, having good erotic health is important. And so we're going to talk about that. And no, we're not going to be talking about Tantra as California hot tub Tantra. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about genuine sacred sexuality and how to really be genuinely erotically healthy. That's so, funny. Yeah. yeah, right? Uh, so that's what's coming up this weekend. Um, and thank you everybody for watching. Big love. And you know, last thing, if you find this show valuable, and so many of you have um, said thank you, please share this on your wall. Share us with your friends. That's how we meet new people. So that's a wonderful way you can pay it back to us. Um, God bless you, Trish. God bless you again, Trish. <laughs> <laughs> and God bless all of you watching. Take care, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, and I'm saving the chat. There we go.